back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are breaking down your WWE WrestleMania Backlash 2021 show review. Now, I hate that pay-per-view name, and I didn't even do predictions for this show, so uh, I do apologize for that. It was just like a ton of things hit me at once, so I could not get that up to you guys, so I do apologize for that. But through the night, I'll let you guys know my predictions for the matchups. But I have a good feeling that I'm pro I am I feel like I got this one pretty, pretty covered, man. I feel like a lot of these matches are kind of predictable, and we'll see how the show goes. You know, I'm, I'm not too, too excited, but I am intrigued to see how a few of these things go outside of maybe a couple matches here and there. Uh, speaking of the Lumberjack match, I just don't care really about Priest and Miz, but let's dive into the show, guys. Let's break down everything that took place, let you guys know how I personally feel about it, where we're going to go from here, my excitement level, all of those things that I thought about tonight's show. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, guys, so starting out with the kickoff show, I'm not sure if there was a match before this, but this is the first matchup that I saw. Sheamus defends the U.S. title against Ricochet. I don't know if it was like last minute scheduled. I don't even know if the title was on the line. I think the title was on the line, but Ricochet had on jeans. It's like they came up to him last second. We're like, you're going to battle for the U.S. title, but it was okay with me. You know, I know it was last minute, but these guys have great chemistry. I'd love to see another classic between these guys. You know, it wasn't like, again, it wasn't like a, you know, a five-star classic or anything, but these guys could go. I'd love to see them, you know, get a great chance on the main show with a bunch of time and let them go because these guys were killing it. It was a great back and forth. Sheamus does end up winning, which was kind of underwhelming the way he won after a great matchup, but I would love to see more of these guys. Sheamus does retain the title, and it was some pretty good stuff right here. Hopefully, at the next show, we will get a continuation of this feud. All right, guys, so starting out with match number one, we started things off with the Raw Women's Championship triple threat match, Rhea Ripley defending against Charlotte and Asuka, and I gotta be honest with you, you know, coming into this thing, I kind of had mixed feelings because, like, I love the story. I think the story kind of built up naturally, which is always a plus. I feel like my camera's slightly off tilter. I don't like that. We're not enjoying that. So coming into this, I was kind of intrigued to see how this one would play out. I thought the matchup was interesting, you know, not like an over-the-top classic, but I thought they got the job done. I thought we had some interesting twists and things like this. The only thing that I'm worried about now is that we're headed towards Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte because Charlotte wasn't pinned. Rhea Ripley did pin Asuka, and it was a very weird ending because Asuka, like, Charlotte was right there on the apron. She kicked Asuka. Asuka took the time to get hit with the Riptide, one, two, three, when Charlotte clearly could, like, she had time to break it up, so I don't know. But Rhea Ripley's still your Raw Women's Champion. It was an interesting opener. I thought it was solid. Nothing, like, insanely crazy, but it was a good women's matchup, and I enjoyed it, and I agree with this. I know I didn't do a predictions video, but I did predict Rhea Ripley, and I guess that'll be a theme through the night. I'll let you guys know who my prediction was since I did not do a predictions video, but Rhea Ripley was my prediction, and she got the job done. Next up, guys, was the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match between Rey and Dominic Mysterio taking on the Dirty Dogs. Hate that tag team name. Just atrocious. Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode teaming up here with the tag titles, defending them against father and son. Should make for an interesting take. Now, before the matchup, they showed where Dominic got beat up in the big stage area. You know, I don't know why I said backstage so weird. In the backstage area. And, you know, he couldn't compete. He had to uh, pretty much stay on the sidelines for this one. He could not go out there and wrestle with his father. So he was sidelined for the beginning. Nice little, you know, it's pretty much the plot device of the storyline of this matchup where the Dirty Dogs were being the Dirty Dogs taking out the one partner. So it would be a two-on-one handicap match to start this thing off. That went on for a while. Some pretty decent back and forth. Some good heel work by the team. Out of nowhere, out comes Dominic Mysterio. They finally built up some momentum. 619 Frog Splash and Father and Son win the tag titles. Great moment here. Really thought that this was going to happen at WrestleMania. That ended up not happening, which actually shocked me a lot. I thought for sure that'd be on the Mania card, and we'd never hear the end of it, but we got it here. It was a nice moment. I thought it was cool. I did predict them to win for my prediction for this one. It was Father and Son, and they did pull the trigger on it. So on the night right now, 2-0, and not counting the Sheamus matchup, of course, that I didn't know was happening. However, solid little matchup, you know, cool little moment, but the tag team divisions are just atrocious right now. I would love to see them build it back up, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen but pretty cool moment here you know solid little matchup nice little after match promo as well we'll see where they go from here next up guys was the lumberjack match between the miz and damian priest and i gotta say man i did not know that wwe could get that low good god man i don't know what i was watching brad but geez dude that was not it that was definitely not it you guys did not know they replaced all of the roster that you know in lumberjack matches usually the the whole roster or a bunch of people are on the outside to kind 
kind of, you know, keep things even between the people, prevent outside distractions, all of these different things. Well, they replaced all those with fake zombies. Yes, zombies. Like fantasy character zombies. And yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that about sums it up. They're on the outside. They fight some of them. They take out John Morrison. Miz gets pinned and then gets eaten by him at the end. I don't know what I just watched. It was typical WWE, just cringeworthy garbage, just stuff that I do not care. Like after that happened, like after I knew the zombies were coming out, I pretty much just didn't care about the matchup. I knew Damian Priest would win. I did predict him to win, so that's another dub there. A lot of stuff very uh, telegraphed tonight, you know, very predictable, but yeah, this was something that I just did not, I didn't care about the feud going in. You added zombies and it just, I didn't know if it could get any worse, but it did. It definitely did, but Damian Priest defeats the Miz, so that's a good sign. Next up, guys, was our SmackDown Women's Championship match. Bianca Belair defending against Bayley, and this one, uh, I mean, I was looking forward to this one. You know, on paper, this has the makings to be really good. Back and forth was very solid in this matchup. At the end, though, we had some interesting things take place. Of course, if you guys missed this one, I would go check it out, you know, just to see the kind of back and forth chemistry these guys had. I think they will battle again because of the ending. Bianca Belair, like, wrapped up Bailey's foot with her long hair extension and won the matchup. And, you know, after the matchup, Bailey was pissed. She was, you know, Bianca's a cheater, all of this. So we will have to see exactly what takes place. We'll have to see where we go from here, but I think it is inevitably they will cross paths again. I mean, that's pretty much where we're leading, right? I mean, you can pretty much see the, the writing is on the wall. We will have to see where it goes, but Bailey does lose to Bianca Belair in a pretty solid matchup. Bianca using the hair tie, though, was surprising. I really didn't expect to see that, but I guess we will see how this thing plays out and, you know, go from there. But I also forgot to mention, Charlotte rocked a, a Corilla DeVille 101 Dalmatians attire earlier in the night, so worth mentioning that. And I think Ray and uh, Dominic also had Batman and Joker gear or Batman and Robin gear, I think. I don't know. Next up, guys, was our triple threat WWE Championship match. Bobby Lashley defending against Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman. Now, coming into this matchup, you know, I was pretty excited because, you know, you have a lot of big physical men. You got a lot of strong bodies, massive men. Every man in this matchup is massive. Tons of muscle, tons of athleticism. I mean, this matchup, it reminded me a lot of, like, Brock Lesnar and Goldberg from WrestleMania 33. You know, just a hard-hitting clash of the Titans. Just speed, athleticism, power just wrapped up into one man. What a fun matchup. You know, tons of back and forth, tons of great power moves and crazy stuff that you would not expect out of these three men. Just great stuff overall, man. A Mitsunoku driver from Drew McIntyre on Braun Strowman. It's like, how's that even possible? You know, that's like 2K level stuff where you're... Well, my son got sick in the middle of that last clip, so I don't even know where I ended off. But Bobby Lashley retains the WWE Championship. I apologize for that, but this matchup was fun. You know, powerful stuff. Both athletic guys as the challengers for Bobby Lashley, man. Really fun matchup. I definitely tell you to go check check it out just all over the place really crazy really fun matchup definitely go check it out but Bobby Lashley remains your WWE champion and did anybody notice that the red plate right here of the WWE title fell off did that happen tonight or is that an ongoing thing I don't know I just noticed it tonight so there you go and for the main event, guys, we had the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns defends against Cesaro. Very physical matchup. I was really hyped for Cesaro to get this opportunity. You know, they kind of broke down the comparisons in their careers and, you know, how many main events that, you know, at WrestleMania the Romans got and championships and all these things. And I didn't like the way they made Cesaro sound. They kind of made him sound like just a terrible competitor. But I understand. I understand what they were trying to do there. But that's just something that stood out to me in my brain. But this was a great matchup back and forth. They went for a really long time. They gave these guys plenty of time to put you know the story together I think Cesaro much like Kevin Owens he was kind of like the Kevin Owens from the KO Roman Reigns feud you know where it, it I don't know you just couldn't put this guy down it took a lot to put this guy down lots of great back and forth the arm injury was a great selling point in this matchup and I don't know man just a really really fun matchup that I had a ton of fun watching and it was great man at the end of the day Roman Reigns does retain he locks in the guillotine after a ton of fight from Cesaro it was too much for him and he officially lost the matchup but after the matchup was the big story because after the matchup, I mean, you guys can probably see where this is going. Anyway, out comes Jey Uso and Jey Uso comes out there. He crowns Roman Reigns with the, you know, the floral chain or the floral necklace, whatever you want to call it. And then he beats the hell out of Cesaro. And then out of nowhere, Seth Rollins music hits. 
and Seth Rollins comes out there in a beautiful suit in the white with the paint dripping down of Seth dripping Rollins all over the place and he comes out there and I don't you don't really know what's going to take place right he's just staring down Roman Reigns and then out of nowhere he snaps and beats the hell out of Cesaro so and then I think we're going to write Cesaro off TV maybe because he locked his arm inside of a chair and slammed it into the turnbuckle and you know it, it looks like we're writing off Cesaro for a little bit so we'll just see but I also saw a, a leak where Roman Reigns is supposedly taking on Seth Rollins at SummerSlam so maybe they're going to form like a short alliance right here and then Seth Rollins will eventually turn on Roman Reigns setting up the SummerSlam matchup is what it looks like it's headed that would be cool i'd like to see where that goes all the things developing and everything like that but that did it for our wrestlemania backlash show still hate that name think it's garbage but you know what brad i don't write the checks i just react to the garbage they put on the tv or the good stuff they put out good stuff too but i'm just saying backlash was way better not wrestlemania backlash but overall thoughts on the show just really predictable i think i went undefeated on the night i'm pretty sure as far as my predictions are concerned i predicted bobby lashley i predicted you know, Dom and Rey Mysterio. I predicted Roman Reigns here, so I think I pitched a perfect game as far as that is considered, but I'm not bragging because, again, it was pretty telegraphed. Like, I feel like everybody pretty much did that. I don't think anybody really would have picked different. Maybe a couple, you know, wild cards here and there, but that pretty much wraps up your WrestleMania Backlash review, guys. Thank you so very much for checking out my review. I would love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below of the show, as well as my review of the show, if you will, but I'm excited to see where we go from here. You know, we'll see how everything plays out and stuff like that, but a great showing by Cesaro and everything like that, but I don't know, kind of an uneventful show, just, you know, some good stuff here and there, but overall, just kind of a blay, you know, nothing like where I'm just I'm itching to go watch it or I'm not like highly motivated by it, but anyways, guys, thank you for watching, subscribe to the channel, and don't cross a line like the zombies, the zombies definitely cross the line you cross the line